If you have ever read the book of Genesis, one of the more notable stories you would have come across is the Tower of Babel. In this well-known narrative, the setting is a time when all the peoples of the earth spoke the same language. They moved to a plain in Sahar and decided they would build a city that would include a tower that reaches the heavens. Yahweh saw that the people of the earth were building this tower, to which he said, if as one people speaking the same language they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so they will not understand each other. Clearly Yahweh was not going to have any of this, so he scattered the people building the city across the earth and gave them different languages. Clearly this is supposed to be an origin myth that explains why humans speak different languages. The narrative even explains that the word Babel comes from how the Lord Yahweh confused the language of the world. The key word is myth because like other narratives in Genesis, these stories as they are written did not actually happen in history. But are there any kernels or reflections of the culture writing this story within? What are the sources of this story, whether it be the circumstances the Israelites or Hebrews were in, or the influences from other cultures? As I've stated in other videos, ancient Israel did not develop in a vacuum, and was clearly influenced by the cultures and civilizations surrounding it. There is a Mesopotamian myth that seems to have influenced the Tower of Babel narrative, specifically the Sumerian Enmerkar and the Lord of Arata. Enmerkar, ruler of Uruk, is building a ziggurat and demands tribute from the land of Arata. Enmerkar even prays to the god Enki to restore the linguistic unity of the many peoples across the region of the Near East, stating in an incantation, the whole universe, the well-guarded people, may they all address and kneel together in a single language. The parallels between the Enmerkar myth and Tower of Babel are clear, specifically with the belief of the earliest humans sharing a common universal language and people in a city building a large tower or ziggurat. This is evidence that the author of this narrative knew about this Sumerian myth and borrowed substantially from it. In a wider Mesopotamian context, interestingly enough, the name Babel derives from the Babylonian and Akkadian Bab-ili, which means Gate of God. Clearly, the Babylonians are important to the formation of this story. For background, ancient Babylon and the Babylonian civilization was centered around southern Mesopotamia, the region formerly inhabited by the Sumerians. Babylon is first referred to in the 3rd millennium BCE, but it did not become a major player in the Near East until the 2nd millennium BCE. Babylon was ruled and inhabited by different Semitic groups, first founded by the Amorites, then conquered by the Kassites, and later ruled by the Chaldeans during the Neo-Babylonian period. In fact, the Chaldeans have other connections to Genesis, such as when Abraham is said to be from Ur of the Chaldees. This indicates that 1. The book of Genesis would have been written after the Chaldeans rose to power in Babylon around the 9th century BCE, and 2. The Israelites and Judahites were well aware of the Babylonians. It is also during the Neo-Babylonian period that Babylon's empire would reach its greatest extent. After conquering the Assyrians, the Babylonian Empire would extend all the way to the Levantine coast, including Israel. In 597 BCE, the Babylonians destroyed Israel and sent King Jeconiah and thousands of Jews into exile. Scholars agree that, based on the linguistic evidence and certain context clues, it is during this Babylonian exile that the vast majority of the Hebrew Bible was written and compiled, including the Book of Genesis. The story of the Tower of Babel is no exception as there are a few context clues indicating it was written, like the rest of Genesis, during the exile in Babylon. One of these I have previously mentioned, which is the clear influence of the Sumerian myth Enmerkar and the Lord of Arata. It could be the case that the Tower of Babel myth was written much earlier, perhaps during the Late Bronze Age or Early Iron Age, and that the author came into contact with the Sumerian Enmerkar story because the Canaanites and later Israelites were part of a wider Near Eastern scribal tradition that included the copying of well-known Mesopotamian texts. One issue with this is that the language that the Tower of Babel myth and the Book of Genesis were written in was Classical Biblical Hebrew, which dates to around the 8th to 6th century BCE, not Archaic or Paleo-Hebrew or even Late Canaanite which we would expect if the story was written much earlier during the early Iron Age. A 6th century BCE date for the Tower of Babel myth is more likely, as it reconciles the classical Biblical Hebrew with the influence of the story of Enrikar and the Lord of Arata. 
It is most likely that during the Babylonian exile, the author of the Tower of Babel narrative and the other authors of Genesis came into contact with Sumerian literature, including the story of Emmerkar, which was still being preserved by the Babylonians. Both Assyrians and Babylonians would have made copies of Sumerian texts and received an education that involved learning the Sumerian language and literature, similar to how students in modern Western nations learn Latin. Possibly the most important historical context clue that dates the Tower of Babel story to the 6th century BCE is the real-life inspiration for the tower itself. During King Nebuchadnezzar's reign, a large ziggurat was constructed, as many have been throughout Mesopotamian history. This particular ziggurat was known as the Ziggurat of Etamanaki. It is clear, since the book of Genesis and the Hebrew Bible were influenced by the cultural environment of the Near East, including Mesopotamia, that the Tower of Babel itself within the story drew inspiration from one of the ziggurats of Mesopotamia. Since the vast majority of the Old Testament was composed during the Babylonian exile, the author of specifically the Tower of Babel narrative most likely saw the Etamanaki ziggurat during this time. An argument could be made that the Sumerian ziggurat tower of the moon god Nana at Ur could have been the inspiration. The only issue is Hebrew was not a language during the third dynasty of Sumer, and the Israelites would not be a distinct ethnic group until around 1200 BCE. As stated earlier, the book of Genesis was, for the most part, compiled and written during the Babylonian exile, much later than the Sumerian Third Dynasty, when the ziggurat of Nana at Ur was built. It is still possible the Hebrews encountered the ruins of this ziggurat, but the ziggurat of Etamanaki seems to be the more likely candidate, because the Hebrews would have no doubt encountered Etamanaki while in captivity in Babylon. It also helps that the scholarly consensus agrees with my position. Out of all the myths and legends from the book of Genesis, the Tower of Babel has always been one of the more captivating stories to me. What makes it even more interesting is comparing it with other myths from the ancient Near East and learning about the real-life influence from ancient Babylon. Perhaps in the future, archaeological discoveries will shed even more light on the various legends from Genesis. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe to my channel.